Good morning and welcome to uh, the Parish of Rayleigh for our morning prayer service. Today, Tuesday the 7th of December. Today we are remembering Ambrose, Bishop of Milan, Teacher of the Faith, um, circa 397. <coughs> uh, so as we come together let's still our hearts and minds as we prepare to uh, face our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. O Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, Sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. So let us pray with heart and mind as we come before our Lord. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Today we have uh, either Psalm 56 or Psalm 57. I will be reading Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those that would trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet. My soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit for me, and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations, for your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. Tender God, gentle protector in time of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair, and give us, with all your people, a song of freedom and a shout of praise in Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is Isaiah chapter 30, verses 19 to the end. If you wish to read that now, if you pause the recording and return when I will be reading the New Testament reading. The New Testament reading is from Matthew, 
chapter 13 to the end. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw great crowds, and, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five fishes and two, fi two lo five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the bread and gave them to the disciples and, gave, and to, to give to the crowd. They all ate and were filled and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides the women and children. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. That evening, when came, evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genesaret. After the people of that place recognised him, they sent word throughout the region and brought all those who were sick to him and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the response read, Now is the time to awake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. And the Gospel Canticle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. 
and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Now we come to a time of prayer. And first, let us um, think of the persecuted church throughout the world. And as is normal, I will be reading from the Barnabas Trust. And the, uh, the prayer for this past Sunday. Lord Jesus, we remember the rich Christian heritage of Turkey and recall the spread of your word in that country as your early church was established there, after which came so much terrible persecution. We cry out to you for our brothers and sisters in Turkey today a tiny minority now, as they adjust to growing pressures and abuses. We ask you to protect them in a climate of increasing repression and hostility. We pray that your living and active word will leave its mark and fortify your people as they seek to serve you. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And there's a little piece here that um, uh, we've been asked to recall and remember in our prayers. God willing, by the time you read this, Barnabas Fund's petition calling for recognition of the Armenian genocide will have been delivered to the governments of the United Kingdom, Australia and New Zealand. Please pray that it will leave impact in all three countries and that their governments will formally recognise as genocide the atrocities of a century ago in which 3.75 million Armenian, Assyrian, Greek, Syriac Christians were killed within Ottoman territories. Pray that such recognition will help prevent any future repetitions. So let us pray that this will indeed be the case, that our own government here in the United Kingdom and that in uh, um, Australia and New Zealand will indeed take on that particular issue and contact their own um, parliamentary members and um, and, and ask them to uh, take action within Parliament to bring this issue to the government's attention. And now a prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious and heavenly Father, source of every blessing, giver of every good gift, we worship and adore you and bless your holy name. We praise you for the revelation of yourself in our Lord Jesus Christ and every glimpse that we have of your nature. May our love and worship of you so fill our lives that we show you forth to others. We praise you for all the joys of life and for the everyday blessings which we receive from you. May we, in turn, be a source of blessing to all whom we come into contact. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for victims of so many atrocities throughout the world. O oh God, we bring hope out of emptiness, energy out of fear, new life out of grief, and loss. 
comfort all who have lost homes through persecution, war, or deliberate destruction. Give them security, a place to live, and neighbours they trust to be with, a new sign of peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And at this time, with uh, the spreading of a new uh, strain of the virus, which has bedeviled us over the past couple of years, O oh God, you bring hope out of emptiness, energy out of fear, new life out of grief and loss. Comfort all homes through persecution, war, exile or deliberate destruction. Give them a place to live and neighbours that they trust and peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, why do we anticipate the worst when time and again the worst never happens? Even when it does, life goes on every day and every day comes to an end. Lord, help us to overcome our fears in this brief moment of reflection. Calm our minds, help us to relax, let your spirit enter us again and fill us with peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, the day draws near when the glory of your Son will make radiant the night of the waiting world. May, may the lure of greed not impede us from the joy which moves the hearts of those who seek him. May the darkness never blind us to the vision of wisdom which fills the minds of those who find him. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today. God of hosts, who called Ambrose from the governor's throne to be a bishop in your church and an intrepid champion of your faithful people, merciful grant that, as he did not fear to rebuke rulers, so we, with like courage, may contend for the faith that we have received through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And awaiting his coming in glory, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. <coughs> pardon, pardon me for that. <coughs> May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining me for our morning prayer on this Tuesday morning. Pray now as we all go about our daily business today that our Lord will lead us where he wants us to be and put into our mouths the things he wants us to say to those we meet. So now as we leave, God bless you all and see you again in the near future. Goodbye.